Nightline presents an astonishing snapshot of gun violence in America. For 11 straight days, we tracked every shooting from big cities to suburban enclaves. And the numbers are nothing short of staggering. And yet it's the stories behind those numbers that paint a time-lapse portrait of a nation gone numb. Here's ABC's senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear it. Gunfire. Those are some of the actual shots fired on June 24th, 2016. Just an ordinary day. We're in shock. It could have been anybody. It's senseless. It's got to stop. This morning, a suspect is on the loose following a shooting in central Columbia. It's the first of 11 days that Nightline decided to chronicle. A man is shot and critically injured. In coordination with ABC yeah. affiliate stations across the country. He was going to kill them all. For a snapshot of a nation under fire. Early details about what exactly unfolded here. When you kill someone, their life is gone forever. It would be a week and a half like most others. Gun violence never far from people's lives, but not at the top of the headlines. But watch this map tell the story of this routine week unfold across America. These are actual shootings during those 11 days, based on data from the Gun Violence Archive. That is a total of 1,586 shot in one 11-day period. And now we turn to a deadly shooting involving police in Patterson. This is the third shooting in the area in the past uh, 24 hours. So we ask, has the country simply grown accustomed or numb? Or are we not paying attention to it at all? Look at what we find when we do. We start in the city that has become synonymous with gun violence. Day one, I'm in Chicago with the U.S. Marshals, who are on the front lines of this battle. He's a gangster disciple. He's wanted out of Milwaukee on a drug case, federal warrant. He's also wanted by Chicago uh, narcotics for a UW for a gun case. We're searching for potentially dangerous men known to carry guns and often willing to use them. By 8 a.m., there have already been two shootings today. People are afraid to live in their own neighborhoods, and that's, that's very sad to me. But better neighborhoods are not immune to violence. 800 miles away in solidly middle-class Folsom, Pennsylvania, rookie cop Chris Dorman, checking out an alleged drug dealer, is shot seven times. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! And I heard the shots. Pop, 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 pop. His bulletproof vest would save his life. But this incident, part of a rising number of police officers shot. 216 shots so far this year, 32 killed. 90 minutes after, in the heart of the Rust Belt, Warren, Ohio, a little girl calls 911. Her mom is having a fight with her boyfriend over some groceries. Um, oh, sorry, ma'am. We need, we need to call for this. Um, my mother's boyfriend is trying to hurt. They're trying to abuse her. How old are you, honey? Um, I'm 11. Okay, I'm going to get you. Then he pulls out a gun. I want you to stay on the phone with me. Do not hang up. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm crying, but... Your mom was just shot. You're going to be very upset. <laughs> I've seen blood coming from her head. The police arrive. The groceries are scattered on the ground. Jessica Crowder is dead. So is her boyfriend, R.J. Culver, who police say turned the gun on himself. Jesse was the kind of girl that would hold it in. If you love somebody, I guess it's kind of hard to leave them. Her sister Heather says the couple had been on and off for three years. R.J. had been arrested for domestic violence at least six times before. On average, a woman will leave seven times before leaving her abuser for good. It would have been better if she could have got away from him. She felt that if she knew where he was, that her kids were safe. Here's a sign that we had in Memorial. Not getting to see her, not getting to hug her, not getting to touch her, it's hard. And then you're going to see her two kids asking, when's mama coming home? During the 11 days we chronicled, 67 men, women, and children were killed in domestic violence-related shootings. It's 5 p.m. in the wealthy enclave of Fullshire, Texas. 42-year-old mother of two, Christy Sheets, calls a family meeting in this upscale, pristine home. When her husband and two daughters, Madison 17 and Taylor 22, arrive, she takes out a gun. Police had been called to the house at least four times prior to prevent Christy Sheets from killing herself. I promise you, whatever you are, I will. 
This time, she kills her own daughters. A few females lying in the road that have been shot. The mother was shot and killed by a responding Fulshire police officer. A staunch gun advocate, Christie recently put this post up on Facebook. For the devastated husband and father, the culprit, mental illness. Christie was admitted to a private mental health facility for evaluation and treatment on three separate occasions related to attempted suicide. Her daughter Taylor, seen here in this video, was going to be married two days later. Scenes like this playing out all over the nation. Well, they're saying a couple people shot, two different locations. Tonight we're on Chicago's troubled South Side, riding with Polly LaPointe. All right, which shooting is worse, do you know? He's what some call a night crawler, a video journalist who spends his evenings covering shooting after shooting. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Bishop first because that's a hot block, so. But in this neighborhood, it seems like every block is hot. 76th and Sangamon. Uh, it's definitely a homicide. There's a body. Okay. Cover it up. How many times have you shot a dead victim? At least 200 this year. 200 this year? Yeah. Those are human lives. Gone. She thinks she knows who may have been shot. She's calling somebody, and they're not answering her phone, and she's worried it's someone she knows. The cries of Chicago, this happens at every shooting. Even before the cries subside and the body can be removed, another call comes in. Oh, people standing around there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a hot zone right here. So somebody's dead on the street. Doesn't look like there are a lot of witnesses. It's probably that those witnesses don't want to talk. Got to be two dozen people standing on the other side of the tip over there. Somebody saw something. Meanwhile, the music plays on as if nothing happens. There's something just not right about it, the way these people die on the street like this. There's lead flying all over America, killing people, and it's something that should be addressed as a major health issue. In fact, the American Medical Association has recognized this as a public health crisis and is seeking to overturn 20-year-old legislation preventing the CDC from researching gun violence. And while Chicago's reputation may precede itself, six months into 2016, already 101 more people have been killed this year than last. The violence plaguing Chicago did not stop over this Mother's Day weekend. At least 49 people were shot over the past three days. We finally stopped filming at 3 a.m. Saturday morning. But by the time America wakes up, one of 1,212 accidental shooting incidents so far this year has occurred. Two brothers only five and four years old are playing in this house in impoverished East Orange, New Jersey. They find a gun. The five-year-old shoots the four-year-old, Christopher Sproul. Gianna Sproul's racking grief is almost unbearable. The 22-year-old mother has been charged with endangering the welfare of a child and a weapons violation. She's pled not guilty. Not only is it a tragedy of the one that died, but the one who's still alive. Within an hour, there's more gun violence in Chicago. Four of this woman's family members have just been shot. She asked that we not show her face, fearing for her safety. It's a beating on the back door. So when I open the door, he just falls right in, and I just see all the blood. I don't want to move him in case the bullet travels, so I just take a towel and apply pressure. But then her brother, pregnant sister, and friend also stumble in, also having been shot. I'm leaving Chicago the first chance I get. You feel like you need to get out of here? It's not safe. A mass shooting is defined as four or more victims. So far this year, there have been 185 across the U.S. In places like this, traumas are constantly being relived. Each new shooting tearing open barely healed wounds. Community activist Andrew Holmes is here at the scene to help victims. Hopefully they uh, survive these injuries. But for him, it's personal. His daughter, 32-year-old Tamara Sword, mother of five, was shot dead in Indianapolis, caught in the crossfire. I worked very hard for many years as an activist to reduce gun violence, and it hits my home deep, my own daughter. When you got the word about her, her I mean, how do you even process it? It took me through pure hell, mm. pure hell. You know, I just want, just wanted to give up. 
I didn't want to give a damn about anybody else anymore. When I'm taking a family to identify their loved ones, it's like I'm unzipping that bag, looking at her. A gun may have stolen the life of Tamara Sword, but it may have saved the lives of a Portland mom and her children. They arrived home to find an intruder in their house. She shoots him dead. One of 1,202 shooting incidents in a home invasion so far this year. I would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then called the cops and been like, yeah, I did it. Which brings us back to Chicago, where we started with the U.S. Marshals, veritable experts in taking armed criminals off the streets. On this day, they hunt for a suspect in a murder that shook the city of broad shoulders to its core. It was a lady that who walked out of Starbucks. A stray bullet piercing Nelson's chest. The intended target, an alleged gang member on the same block. She was less than 100 yards from police headquarters. We've been working this case obviously day and night since it happened. The suspect has been eluding cops for months. Finally, a lead. We believe he might be in there. When we come back, 